Okay, so hello and welcome to this video tutorial for RC Hibbler's Engineering Mechanics Statics textbook. So we have this second fundamental problem from chapter six of the textbook here, which is asking us to determine the force in each member of the truss stated the members are in tension or compression. So I've recreated the diagram uh, that's shown here just so that uh, we have freedom to just draw all over it and make a complete mess of it. Um, this is all the information we've been given so far, um, but there's already lots that we can say about this problem, right? So um, before we get into it as well, I should say, if some of the concepts covered here are maybe a little bit lost on you, please feel free to look at my tutorial for uh, F6, one, uh, F6 six dash one, uh, where, where we get into more detail with some of these concepts. Um, Right, what can we already say? We can already say we've got some external forces acting here. This is a roller support, uh, and so it's only offering this uh, kind of FA comma X um, resistive force here. Um, now, we know that that is acting to the left, and since we know that that's acting to the left, here at this fixed, su fixed support at point B, uh, we can say we've got FB comma X acting to the right. And uh, since this 300 pound force at point D is acting down, we can say for sure that FB uh, comma Y is acting up. OK, um, we can add some more here. So we could look at point D and say, well, we have this 300 pound external force acting down. The only thing that can possibly counter that is the upward component of uh, CD here, or the vertical component of CD, and since that is acting to the right, uh, well, uh, AD at, uh, at this part must act to the left. Um, okay, and then and since the members are in equilibrium, we can kind of fill these ideas in here. Oops. Um, what else can we say? What else can we say? Well, since FB comma X is acting to the right, uh, BC here must be acting to the left. So we can add this idea in here. OK, um, there's not much more we can say about the internal forces. Um, we can't really say for certain if these are zero force members or not. They are, um, but we'll kind of prove that later on. Um, we can also say something about the geometry of our truss here, which will help us out later. Uh, we can work out this angle here. Uh, so this whole truss goes four across and three up. We could calculate that angle there by doing the inverse tan of three over four in that instance, which I know is equal to 36.87 degrees. So we've got a 36.87.87 degrees uh, angle there. Okay, so now that we have the sort of geometry of our problem and we understand the uh, kind of directionality of, of uh, some if not all of our internal forces here, we can, um, what, a place where I like to start really is to consider the uh, equilibrium of the truss as a whole. Okay, now uh, what forces are acting externally here? We have this 300 pound force uh, at point D, we have this FA comma X at point A and FB comma Y and FB comma X at point B. Uh, we have four four external forces there. Um, no, we can solve FB comma Y immediately since uh, this is the only force that counters this 300 pound force at point D. We can say, yeah, FB comma Y is equal to 300 pounds. Uh, horizontally though, it's less obvious. We have two unknown forces, one acting right, one acting left. Um, but what we can say is that they're equal to each other. So let's just write that down. FA comma X is equal to F, uh -huh, FB comma X. OK. So uh, we've considered the uh, external forces going on here. Before we get into looking at uh, the joints here and looking at what's going on internally. Um, there is a approach that I want to introduce you guys to here 
um, when trying to understand the forces going on um, externally or the, the the forces acting on the trust as a whole. Um, and that's this 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 idea that I've put in the uh, on the right hand side here, um, which is called taking moments. Effectively, I, I trust that, that that you guys are familiar with this already. But the idea here is that a moment uh, is the product of uh, uh, the force um, acting a kind of particular perpendicular distance away from a point. What do I mean by this? Well, the idea the idea with moments is that say this system is in equilibrium. The idea is that if I were to kind of place my finger on point D here, if I were to take moments about point D, that the moments acting clockwise are equal to the moments acting anticlockwise. Since the system is in equilibrium, right? We're not we're not saying that this system is rotating at all. Um, so this is an important idea that the if I were to place my finger anywhere really on, on this truss, the forces or the moments really acting anti-clockwise are equal to the moments acting anti-clockwise. So to solve for fa comma x and fb comma x here, we can take moments. We can say uh, we can write it out like this. We can say the sum, oh dear, the sum of the moments at d, let's say, acting clockwise are equal to zero. So let's imagine we're placing our finger on point D here uh, and consider the external forces. So we've got FB comma Y, FB comma X and FA comma X. FA comma X doesn't rotate the paper. If anything, it's squishing the paper, but that's it's, it doesn't have a moment here. It doesn't have a moment about D. Uh, FB comma Y and FB comma X, however, do. So FB comma X is clearly uh, acting clockwise. And FB comma Y is acting anti-clockwise. Uh, so the clockwise moment here will be um, three FB comma X, since the perpendicular distance uh, to that moment is uh, three feet. And uh, by the same token, the anti-clockwise moment here will be four FB comma Y. That's the idea. Well, we know FB comma Y, it's 300. So I can say, therefore, uh, FB comma X, oops, FB comma X is equal to um, uh, four thirds of 300, which by inspection is 400 pounds. OK, so we've solved for FB comma X there. We, we, we outlined earlier that FAX and FBX are the same thing, so we can say uh, Therefore, F A comma X is equal to 400 pounds as well. Cool. So we've just uh, solved all the external forces going on here. Let's now go ahead and look at the internal forces. And the um, internal or the, the joint that I'm kind of interested in to start with is joint D. Uh, since we have zero degrees of freedom here, the, the idea is that we have um, two unknowns. CD and AD, um, and we have two relations. We have our kind of horizontal, uh, we, we can resolve horizontal and we, we, and we can resolve um, vertically here. So uh, let's go ahead and solve uh, joint D here. So we know that this 300 pound force uh, is counted by the vertical component of CD. So uh, it, we can say uh, some of the forces in the Y are equal to zero at D. Uh, Therefore, uh, what's acting down, so 300, is equal to what's acting up. So we can say CD sine 36.87. Now, um, we can rearrange this. We can say uh, CD is equal to 300 over sine 36.87, uh, which when we bung in our calculator gives us a value of 500 pounds. A nice neat value there for CD. So we've solved for CD. Now we just need to solve for AD. Uh, we can do that by resolving horizontally. So uh, the it looks like we have AD acting to the left and the uh, horizontal component of CD acting to the right. Therefore, um, CD, which is 500, let's just write out 500, 500. Uh, cos 
36.87 is equal to AD. Therefore, AD is equal to 400 pounds when you put that into your calculator there. Um, let's quickly just say if this if these ideas are in compressional tension. So uh, clearly CD is in tension here. And AD is in compression. Cool. So we have uh, AD, we have CD. Um, note here that AD is equal to 400 and uh, FA comma X is also equal to 400. So with these two forces here, AD and FA comma X, we're in horizontal equilibrium. The only other kind of potential horizontal idea is this AC um, member here, but evidently we're already in horizontal equilibrium, so we can say, well, this is the zero force member. Um, we can also say then, well, okay, since this is a zero force member, there's no vertical component from it. And so this vertical member is also a zero force member. I trust that you guys understand what's, what's going on there. Uh, so we've identified these as zero force members here. And since this is a zero force member, this is a very logical thing. I, I, I quite enjoy the logic of these problems. Um, since this is a zero force member, uh, when we look at joint C, C, D, and B, C must be equal to each other, right? So I, I can write that. I can say uh, B, C equals C, D uh, equals whatever we wrote for C, D earlier, 500 pounds. 500 pounds. And that is in tension. Okay. Um We've solved for BC there, and it appears like we've solved for everything in, in this problem here. Okay, um, cool. So uh, if you have any questions or comments about that problem, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section down below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching.